Hello, hello, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, now we are in session number two. Uh, and we know that this means that we have just two more sessions uh, when we finish this one. And we are in the middle of the last week. So in this case, we are going to end this uh, module in two more days. So in this case, this is the last days in which we are going to uh, have this module talking about this kind of topics. So we are starting session number two. We have an hour to complete this session. And then we are just going to have two more hours in two different days. And then we are going to end the course. So it's a, a really, really good uh, thing because you are going to have like a month um, to, we can say to rest of these classes and then you are going to continue with the process because we know that uh, this process is not like going to end with this course, but you are going to have some time to rest and then do your other activities or the activity that you have in your daily life. Um, yesterday, uh, we were talking about the future census. Uh, we were talking about um, two of these senses that we have in future. One of these is the, um, the future simple. We were talking about what is the future simple, what are the structures that we are going to use for the future simple. We were saying some examples and also we were like, seeing how to create a sentences using that, uh, that structure. And I'm going to share the screen because I'm going to make like a review of the topic that we were seeing yesterday. And it's this one in which we have the three uh, different uh, structures that we can use when we are using the simple or the future simple. So in that case, we were talking about the positive sentence, the negative sentence, and the question. So in that case, we are just using the wheel for this uh, simple future. And uh, it is like the most common structure that maybe we can use in, in, in future. Because we are going to feel like this is very, very common. Uh, mm, we can feel like compatible with this structure. So in that case, this is one of the most used when we are talking in English and we want to express uh, different things, action and ideas in a future time. But you know that in this case, uh, we have just a specific uses for this kind of structures. And I know that yesterday it was kind of messy because uh, it was raining in different places. Um, and some of you are, I don't know, if, uh, a lot of the people that are here uh, were having troubles yesterday with the connection. So in that case, it, it's going, it's were like complicated to, to hear the information. But for that reason, I am just making that uh, little review of the topic. So in this case, uh, it says that we are going to use this specific structure that is the, the future simple when we want to talk about instant or a spontaneous decision something that is not a maybe we are not planning to do that thing so in that case it's doing the things as we think in this case we have the example that i am hungry in that case it's not like i'm thinking that i will be hungry in some time of other day because maybe we have like uh, a schedule in which we have our meals, like in the breakfast, uh, dinner, and all of that thing. But in this case, maybe we uh, are in a meeting and we forget to eat our meals. And in that case, we are feeling hungry. So in that case, we are deciding 
here do some actions in that moment without planning. En este caso, cuando utilizamos el presente, el, el, el futuro simple, eh, es para acciones, en este caso el will, es para acciones que no estamos planificando. Es para acciones que en muchos de los casos se da de manera espontánea y que no lleva una alta planificación de decir, bueno, en este caso sería diferente. Eh, para la cena voy a comer pescado y esto y esto y esto. Pero en este caso es, yo estoy sintiendo hambre en este momento, así que, ¿qué puedo hacer? Se me viene a la mente algo que quiero comer y decido que lo voy a hacer. So in that case, it's something as spontaneous. Then we have future prediction based on a belief. It's something that we think is going to happen because maybe we want that thing to happen in reality. So in that case, it's based on belief. I'm sure you will pass the exam. Maybe we are talking with a friend. Maybe we are talking with a familiar. Maybe we are talking with uh, our children. Maybe we are talking with the husband, the, the wife, the boyfriend, the girlfriend, or some, uh, someone that we um, have a special relationship. And we are trying to tell the person that we believe in them. So in that case, we are talking about future prediction based on a belief. Tiene que ser basado en una creencia, en algo que nosotros creemos para poder utilizar el will. Then, for promises, voy a prometer algo y tengo que utilizar el will, porque obviamente lo voy a hacer en el futuro. Then, offers, voy a ofrecer algo, alguna situación, alguna ayuda, algo por el estilo para alguna acción que se va a llevar a cabo en el futuro. So, in that case, we are going to use the structure of the uh, simple future or future simple. Then for request, because um, maybe we are trying to talk with someone and that person is not available. So in that case, we ask for something. In this case is, will you tell Henry I'll call? Le podría decir a Henry que llame es pedir que nos hagan este favor. Red, if you don't do that again, I will tell mom. Es como una amenaza. Puede ser una amenaza así como esta de si lo vuelves a hacer, le voy a decir a mamá que te estás portando mal. O puede ser una amenaza que ya lleve una, eh, una connotación negativa. Then, for future facts, cosas que sí eh, sabemos que van a pasar de esa manera o que nosotros creemos que van a pasar de esa manera y que no estamos eh, dispuestos a cambiarlo, no hemos planificado cambiar eh, esas acciones. I will be back later tonight. Maybe we are in our work, or we are going to work uh, in the morning, and we say to someone, eh, I will work the whole day, and I will be back later tonight. Nosotros creemos, estamos seguros que vamos a trabajar todo el día, y que vamos a regresar tarde por la noche, but maybe it, some things happen in our job and make us to change the hours, and, or maybe um, the, the job is kind of hard and we are going to uh, work the whole day and the whole night. So in that case, um, the situation changes, but in that case, it is not like we know that it's going to happen. So in that case, we are going to use the uh, future facts in this case. Then we were talking about the future continuous, that in this case is using the structure of the ING when we are using the verb. So I was uh, telling also that uh, we have continuous in all the times or in all the tenses that we use in English. We have a continuous for present, for past, and even for a future. So in that case, it's not the same structure, but it has the same function with the verb. Así que en esta parte, el, el continuous es el, solo agregar el ing al verbo. Ya lo hemos visto en presente, ya lo hemos visto en pasado, y ahora lo vemos en futuro. Que obviamente utilizamos el will, el want, con el be, más la forma ing de los verbos. I will be working. You will be working in all of that thing. I will be singing. I will be 
eating, I will be working or writing or reading or playing whatever action we want to use. And the last part of this topic are the uses. In this case, we were saying that we have just five different uses for this um, this tense or this part of the tense. And we have the number one, and it says an action in progress at a specific time in the future. So in this case, we are going to use this structure when something is in progress, something is happening, algo está pasando en este momento, o sea, no se ha finalizado, and it's going to continue in a specific time in the future. Tiene un comienzo, no ha finalizado y puede que finalice en el futuro. At 5 p.m., this time tomorrow, in two weeks, in five years, and we have the example. This time tomorrow, I will be flying to Barbados. A esta hora mañana, so in that case, a esta hora mañana voy a estar viajando a Barbados, o volando a Barbados. Pero es una cosa que se va a cumplir en el futuro. Number two, an action we see as new or temporary. In that case, we were talking about actions that we know that uh, it's not going to happen for a long time. Uh, maybe we are staying in a place and we are going to change that, um, that thing in the future and we know that we are working for that. So in that case, in this example we have, I will be working for my dad until I find a new job. So in that case, is something temporary because we are looking for a new job. We are looking to change that situation. Then we have number three, and it says prediction or guesses about future events. Esto es diferente a lo que hablábamos de, eh, en la primera parte, donde decíamos de eh, future predictions based on a belief. En este caso estamos hablando de predicciones, pero no eh, basadas en una creencia, sino que es adivinando, ¿verdad? Nosotros hacemos una predicción de algo que nosotros pensamos que puede llegar a pasar y o hacemos un como adivinar, ¿verdad? Que puede llegar a pasar, pero no es seguro. And in that case we have, he will be, he will be coming to the party, I guess. Él va a venir a la, a la fiesta, creo. No estoy seguro, no me dio confirmación, so I don't know. Then we have the number four, prediction about the present. Predicciones del presente que igual no estamos seguros de que se estén llevando a cabo en el preciso momento en el que lo estamos diciendo. She will be getting married by now, I imagine. Se estará casando en este momento, me imagino, because she tells us that uh, she is going to be married is what, Wednesday. So in that case, we are just um, making a prediction. And the last one is polite inquiries. That in that case is like, we are uh, trying to do something with that person and we ask very, very polite to complete that, uh, that uh, action that we, uh, we want to do. Would you be joining us for dinner? Nos vas a acompañar para la cena? O sea, queremos saber De verdad, si no va a acompañar para la cena, si va a estar presente. Then, the last part is that, eh, in this case, let me see. Mm -hmm. Also, remember that we can use the word shall when we are going to talk about future, but also we can uh, use show in place of will. Podemos utilizar el show um, en lugar del will, más que todo con el I and we. Es, tiene como la misma connotación, pero es como un poco más formal. So in that case, we can use show. So now we are going to um, talk about um, a question, a kind of question. So, this is like uh, an activity, a short, short activity. I have 
nine questions. It is not like nine questions, it's nine situations. In that case, I will ask nine questions based on that situation. And the question is the following. It says, what will, what will you be doing? What will you be doing? We are using the structure for this, um, this future continuous. Estamos utilizando la estructura del, del el futuro continuo. What will you be doing? And I have different situations. So in this case, it's something imaginary because um, we know that in this moment, we are having like a session. So in that case, um, we can imagine something. Uh, we can imagine that we are not having the session anymore. In this case, we have like time for us. And we can tell that activities that we want to perform in that specific time. Voy a poner nueve situaciones, o sea, nueve, nueve momentos con la pregunta, ¿qué estarías haciendo? Y ponemos la nueve, la, los nueve momentos y ustedes se van a imaginar que no están en la sesión, sino que están teniendo tiempo para ustedes, que no están en, en, en una clase de inglés o no están trabajando, sino que van a estar eh, teniendo tiempo para ustedes. Y vamos a contestar, ¿verdad? Basados en esa cuestión imaginaria. So, what will you be doing in five minutes? In two hours? At 9 p.m.? This time tomorrow. On Saturday morning. Next Friday. In two weeks. Next month. And at midnight on New Year's Eve. So let me take this out because we need to see all the situations, so I will move the activity to the next page because we need to see the whole um, list of activities or situation or moments in which we are going to use a phrase. So, in that case, what will you be doing in five minutes? Que vas a estar haciendo en cinco minutos, en dos horas, a las nueve de la noche, a esta hora mañana. Eh, la mañana del sábado, el siguiente viernes, en dos semanas, el, el próximo mes y a la medianoche de lo que es la víspera de Año Nuevo. So, in that case, we have a nice uh, moment in which we are going to do something different. For example, what will you be doing in five minutes? And I can answer, I will be doing dinner, for example. I will be doing dinner. Voy a estar haciendo la cena. In two hours, I will be watching a movie. At 9 p.m., I will be doing my skincare for the, the person that likes to do a skincare. Or I will be reading a book. Because in that case, you're going to use the, um, the verse with the ing. I will be doing. So the structure for the answers, la estructura para las respuestas, I will be doing, y podemos decir qué es lo que vamos a hacer. I will be doing dinner, I will be doing, uh, or we can change and we can say, I will be reading a book, 
maybe watching television. Talking with my friends. And all of that thing. So you need to imagine a situation that or a thing that you uh, want to do at that specific time. Así que pensemos en una actividad que nos gustaría estar haciendo en los diferentes tiempos. And I will ask some of you to say the answer that you have for that situation. So I will give you two minutes. I think that is enough time to uh, think about the answer. Two minutes and then I will choose one of you to begin with the answer. So you can begin thinking about the action that you want to perform in that situation. Okay, two minutes, that's it. We're going to see um, who will be the first uh, person to say the answer for this question. So let me see. Hmm, let's begin with Oscar Melendez. If you have uh, your answer, you can tell me. Oscar. Hello, Miss. Good evening. Good evening. So, I will ask you uh, the question with one of these moments and you can say your answer. So, what will you be doing this time tomorrow? Oh, um, I will be in my English class. Okay, you will be in your English class. So, Oscar. Can you please eh, choose one of your partners? Puede escoger alguno de sus eh, compañeros de, de sesión para que sea el siguiente. Okay. Um, um, Sara Guzmán. Okay, thank you, Sara Guzmán. 
Hey, teacher. Hello, Sara. What will you be doing in two hours? Um, I, I will is, I, I will is, 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 is sleeping. Ah, you will be sleeping. Good. Can you mm -hmm. tell me your name? Excuse me, teacher. Repeat for please. Un nombre. Uh, Margarita. Margarita. Thank you, Sara. Margarita. Okay. Good evening. Good evening, Margarita. What, you, what will you be doing next Friday? Saturday? Next Friday. Next Friday. Yes. I will be in, uh, I will be working. Okay, you will be working. Good. Margarita, can you tell me a name? Um Alejandra. Alejandra, thank you, Margarita. You're welcome. Alejandra. Hello, teacher. Hello. Good. Uh, Alejandra, what will you be doing in two weeks? I will be visited. Ah, uh, visiting? My, my grandfather. Okay, you will be visiting your grandfather. Okay, thank you, Alejandra. Can you give me a name? Okay, um, Daisy. Daisy, thank you, Alejandra. You're welcome. Daisy. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Uh, Daisy, what would you be doing on Saturday morning? I will be doing. Okay. I will be going to Granada. Okay. You will be traveling. Good. Thank you. Daisy, can you give me another name? Carmen Diaz. Carmen, okay. Thank you, Daisy. Carmen. Okay, 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 okay. Cecilia? Cecilia, okay, Cecilia. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Cecilia, what will you be doing next month? Next month? Yes, next month. Okay. I will go next month maybe um the museum museum ah, okay you will be going to the museum good thank you yeah, I will go. yes can you tell me another name um okay um, jose luis jose luis thank you cecilia jose luis Good evening. Good evening. 
So this is your question. What would you be doing? Mm, let's see. What do what would you be doing in two weeks? In two weeks. In two weeks. I will be enjoy the vacation. Oh, good. You will be enjoying the vacation, and I guess all of us is going to enjoy the vacation. Thank you, Jose Luis. Can you give me another yes, thing? Okay. okay. Um, Patricia Rodriguez. Okay, thank you, Jose Luis. Patricia. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Patricia, what would you be doing this time tomorrow? Mm, I will be studying English. Okay, you will be studying English. Good. Patricia, the last name. Mm, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Okay, thank Hello. you, Patricia. Elizabeth. Good evening. Good evening. So, what would you be doing at midnight on New Year's Eve? I will doing. Uh, I will be doing. Uh, what? What does mean? Re, no. ¿Cómo se pronuncia? Reunit. Reunit. Así. You will be Reunited. meeting. Meeting. Una ¿Cómo? reunión. Meeting. With my family. Uh -huh. You will be, or you can say, I will have, I will be having a meeting with my family. Ah, sí. <laughs> mm -hmm. Porque es tener una reunión. So in that case, I will be having a meeting with my family. Okay, thank you, Elizabeth. Okay. So, thank you for your participation. And now we are going to see the other two senses that we have left for the uh, future. So in that case, we are going to talk about the number three, that is the future perfect. Ya hablamos de dos de los eh, senses que podemos utilizar en el futuro. Ahora vamos a hablar de los dos que nos faltan. El número tres es el future perfect. So let's see. Uh, in this case, this one, the number three and number four, I kind of uh, short thought. In that case, we are not going to have a lot of information about these ones because um, they are kind of offshore. So in that case, it's, it's easier to uh, have all the information here. So we said number three, future perfect. So in this case, it's saying that the future perfect is used to talk about a complete action in the future. So in this case, it's not like we are going to talk about a incomplete action or action that is going to be completed at the future. In this case, we are going to talk about complete actions in the future. Vamos a hablar de acciones completas en el futuro, pero ¿cómo así? Si no las hemos visto, no las hemos vivido, no sabemos exactamente qué es lo que va a pasar. Pero ¿cómo nos basamos, verdad? Muchas veces en, en predicciones, en, en ideas, ¿verdad? En cosas que queremos que pasen. So, in that case, we can imagine that something is going to be completed eh, in the future. Or maybe we have like clues that some actions are going to be completed in the future. So in this case, we are going to say that the future perfect is used to talk about a completed action in the future. So in that case, we have the form. But give me, give me just one moment, please.
then it says that we have the point in which we are going to use this future perfect. So we have, in this case, we have just three forms. Uh, in the other ones, you can see that we have more information about the forms in which we are going to use the structure. But in this case, we have just three. So in the first one, let me see here. In the first one, it says, the form of the future perfect is will or want plus have plus past participle. En este caso vamos a utilizar el will, el want para negativos con el have y el pasado participio de los verbos. Then it says regular past participles and in ed. Remember that in this case, we are going to use the regular and irregular verbs that uh, maybe we have that list because it, it's when you are learning English, you can um, find this kind of list on internet in which you can find the complete list of verbs uh, when you have the regular, the regular verbs, um, and it's like a very long list of verbs that we have with the different um, times. So in that case, if you have that list, uh, you know that we are talking about that the endings of the verb. But if you don't have the list, I will, I don't know if you want the list because I have the list in a PDF document, so you can have it for uh, your um, process. Es un documento bastante extenso porque aparecen todos los verbos, ¿verdad? Los regulares y los re irregulares van separados, no están revueltos. Y ahí nos muestra cómo son los finales de los verbos eh, regulares y en el caso de los verbos irregulares, ustedes ya saben que cambian su forma. So in that case, regular past participle end in ed. En muchos de los casos termina en ed, dependiendo también tam, eh, termina en ied o algo por el estilo. Regular past participles. And in ed. And as you know, the irregular past participles don't follow the common conjugation pattern because in that case, it changed the form of the verb. So now we are going to see the examples with the structures that we are going to use for this, um, this tense. We have that we are going to use, we want to have in past participle. So we are going to have the three um, uh, kind of uh, statements, kind of uh, sentence that we can create with this structure. That is the positive, the negative, and the question. So we are going to do the same thing as yesterday, in which we have the table with the different kind of sentence. So let me insert the table that we were doing yesterday. In this case, it's nine. Okay, here we have positive, then negative, and then question. So for the positive, we have, we know that in this case, we need to, to use the pronoun. So we are going to write the pronoun. I, you, he, she, it, we, 
U and they. So then we are going to follow this structure. We are going to write will. Then have. And then the verb. In this case, we're going to use a regular one. Finish. So we have here our sentence. I will have finished. Yo habré terminado. In that case, that is the structure that we are going to follow for that kind of sentence. So we're going to do the same with the other pronoun. I will have finished. Okay, one thing that we need to remember all the time, because uh, this is very, very important, and maybe we can forget that information because we think that we master that information, and, and maybe in uh, uh, a specific moment, it can be like, we can forget that. When we are using the auxiliary verb, um, we are, changing the structure of the sentences. So in that case, when we are using the auxiliary verb, we are not going to change the form of the verbs and the form of the auxiliary verbs when we are using the third person. Así que cuando estemos utilizando lo que son los auxiliares, ustedes saben que no cambian de forma, eh, sin importar qué pronombre estemos utilizando. No es como cuando estamos utilizando en el presente simple que normalmente eh, solo cambiamos ¿verdad? El, el, el verbo cuando llegamos a he, she, it. En este caso, como estamos utilizando el auxiliar will, ese ya nos altera nuestro pronombre, así que no es necesario que nosotros eh, apliquemos la regla de la tercera persona en este tipo de estructura. Así que en este caso no nos vamos a preocupar porque, ay, se me, se me fue la S, no se la puse. O, ay, se me fue, no era así como tenía que escribir el verbo. En este caso, no, no es necesario cambiar todo eso porque ya el mismo auxiliar está haciendo esa función y como no se altera, todo lo que va después del auxiliar tampoco se altera. Now, we are going to see the negative one. And we have I want or will not. In the case that we prefer to write will not. I will not or I won't have finished. And in, this, in that case, it's the same for um, this. So in this case, we're just going to change the negative. And the last one, they won't have finished. Now we are going to see the question or the structure of the question. So in that case, as we were doing with the other tenses, we are going to change a, a little bit the elements of the sentence to make a question. So in this case, we are going to use the auxiliary at the beginning of the sentence to create this interrogative sentence. So we are going to have will I have finished? And the same with the others. Teacher. Tell me. Tell me. I have a question. 
Yes. Uh, how I how I translate this this um, question or or answer? I terminado? will have finished. Yes. Habré yo terminado? Habré yo terminado. Mm -hmm. O oh, habré terminado. Because in, in, in Spanish, it is not necessary to add the pronoun. No, no siempre es necesario que nosotros agreguemos el pronombre en español. En inglés, pues, sí es verdad de ley que lo agreguemos. Pero en español podemos decir, habré terminado, porque estamos hablando del futuro, ¿verdad? Habré yes. terminado esa Ajá, acción. Yes, because we have two auxiliaries. Ajá. In this yes. Case. yes. Mm -hmm. Because in that and, case, and will is mm -hmm. sorry. No, tell me. No, sorry. In that case, you're saying that we have like two auxiliaries, and in that case, will is just for the future. And have is the part of the structure because we are saying the future perfect. El will is el que nos denota a nosotros que estamos utilizando el futuro. Y el have ya es la estructura formal de el perfect, de la parte perfect que incluimos en, la, en los tenses. Así que en ese caso es no como que vamos, vamos a decir tengo, el have in that case is not the same, porque cambia dependiendo de las situaciones y las estructuras que tengamos. Ok, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Uh, the complicated thing here when we are like um, Learning English is that because we know that we can translate a word and it has a, a specific meaning. Tenemos una palabra, le ponemos un significado, pero a veces cuando utilizamos estructuras tienen como un significado diferente. En inglés muchas de las palabras cambian su significado dependiendo del contexto en el que lo utilicemos. Así como en este que no es como decir yo yo voy a tener finalizado es como bien extraño, ¿verdad? Porque lo, si lo traducimos eh, parte por parte, no nos va a dar como un sentido. En, en cambio, si decimos, habré terminado, sí tenemos el sentido, ¿verdad? Porque estamos diciendo que vamos a terminar una acción en el futuro, preguntándonos a nosotros mismos si lo vamos a lograr. So in that case, is eh, changing the meaning depending on the context. Siempre tenemos que fijarnos en el contexto para poder darle un sentido a las oraciones que estamos viendo. So, the next one is, will he have a finish? Will she have finish? Will we have finished? And the last one, will they have finished? And then it says, what are the uses for this sense? In this case, in the last one, we have five. In this case, we have just three. They are less than the other. So the uses, we are going to have just three. Very, very short. Then it says in the number one, an action that will be completed before a specific time in the future. And we have the example for this, and it says, next September, next September, uh, we will have been married for 15 years.
So in this case, we are not using a, a, a regular verb because in that case, we are using being, that is an irregular uh, verb because it's changing the form. So in the number one, eh, una acción que va a ser completada eh, después de un tiempo específico o antes de un tiempo específico, I mean, antes de un tiempo específico en el futuro. Así que tenemos eh, that we are talking about an specific action that is going to happen in the future, like in the example. Next September, we will have been married for 15 years. En el próximo septiembre, vamos a es haber estado casado por 50 años. Ya van a estar de aniversario. That is the meaning of the sentence. That they are going to be uh, celebrating the anniversary of the wedding. Then we have number two. It says years by or by the time to mean some time before. or by the time to mean some time before. And the example say, I will, I'll have finished I have finished this report by the time you are home. So in this case, we are talking about that we are going to use this expression. Vamos a utilizar by o by the time para el tiempo para eh, darle un significado, verdad, de un tiempo antes. Sometime before. Es para especificar, ¿verdad? Que vamos a completar una acción antes de que otra cosa suceda. Como en el ejemplo, I will have finished this report by the time you are home. Voy a haber completado este reporte o este documento o este trabajo para cuando tú llegues a casa. So, in the case is having a specific time in which we are going to finish doing something. And the last one, the number three. It says use in, in a day's time, in two weeks' time, in three months' time, etc., to mean at the end of this period. And we have the example. In three years time, I will have completed my degree. So in this case, we have some uh, phrases that we can use to specify the end of a period of time. Este es para especificar, ¿verdad? Eh, la finalización de un periodo. So we can use in, in a day's time, in two weeks' time, in three months' time, etc. to mean the end of this period. And we have the example. In three years' time, in three años, es como decir en tres años, habré completado mi licenciatura o mi o lo que estoy estudiando en la universidad. So in the case, is like we are talking about the period of time in which we are going to complete the action. 
And now we are going to see the number four, that is the future perfect continuous, que ya es el último de los cuatro y que también es bastante corto en información. So we are going to see number four. And this one is the future perfect continuous. And this one, it says that we use the perfect continuous, uh, I mean, we use the future perfect continuous to show that something will continue up until a particular event in the future. We normally use it to emphasize how long something will have been happening for. In este caso, vamos a hablar de eh, esta estructura para referirnos a que algo va a continuar hasta que suceda otro evento en el futuro y que normalmente lo, util lo utilizamos para enfatizar cuánto tiempo, ¿verdad? Algo ha estado pasando. And in this case, we're just going to have the form, an example, and the uses because we have just like two minutes to end the session. And we are going to complete it this part. So in the form, we have the form of the future perfect continuous is we want. Plus have been plus ing. En algo que si no nos tenemos que confundir es que en el anterior eh, aparecía el, el have been, pero aparecía porque se utilizaba el been como el verbo, ¿verdad? De esa acción. En este caso, el have been sí tiene que ir por fuerza en la estructura, no es como en el anterior. And for example, we can say, I will have been driving. Negative, I want have been driving. And the question, will I have been driving? And it says that for the uses, we show that something will continue up until a particular event in the future. We show something finished just before another time action, cause and effect. And the last one with time expressions by then, tomorrow, next year, et cetera, et cetera, by the time when. For the first one, Vamos a mostrar que algo va a continuar hasta que pase un evento en particular en el futuro. En el segundo, vamos a mostrar que algo terminó antes de otra acción, la causa y el efecto. Y por último, con diferentes eh, expresiones de tiempo como el by then, el tomorrow, next year, and by the time when. So, 
I will write the, the uses and the examples at the end of this, um, this uh, document. I mean, following this structure or this uh, form. And you can find the information here in the document, but now we are going to end the session number two and we are going to uh, just have two more uh, sessions to complete this uh, course. So now we are going to say goodbye and see you tomorrow. Have a really good night. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Good, good night. night. Good night. Good night.